This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at Volcano Island Extended. But before that, this video is brought to you by Farmer G and the 901 Meister. Thank you for being Farm Barons. So the Volcano Island Extended Map can be found over at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Now this is an extended version of a map that was previously released last year. In fact, May 2023, the original map, Volcano Island, was released over at the Giants Mod Hub for all platforms. And now January 2024, we have an extended version of that map released as its own independent map. I'd love to know what you all think down in the comments below with respect to this trend of map updates being released as new versions or new maps, as opposed to simply being updating the original map with that update. Let's go ahead and read a little bit of the description. The Volcano Island is a totally fictional place lost in the middle of the ocean. These islands were discovered a very long time ago, but the former inhabitants have left hastily following a strange discovery. In this extended version, you will have three new plots and more room to expand and install factories. For example, the main island has grown well and you'll find a new BGA, six new large fields, new factories, points of sale, grapes and olives, have been placed down as well as new paths and the collectible locations have been moved. In new farm mode, you'll have several animal enclosures from the start, including cows, chickens, pigs, and sheep, as well as a small equipment farm with additional storage. You'll find several areas on the island, an old village, industrial area, housing estate, several developed areas, a port, as well as an observatory and other mysterious places. You'll find more than a dozen personalized, unique points of sale, as well as custom productions, including mayonnaise, sandwiches, and straw hats. This map includes 53 fields ranging in size from 0.68 to 9.33 hectares in size, 55 viable plots, an all-terrain all course for all-terrain vehicles, an area to build and expand your farm, 20 personalized collectibles, and of course, the volcano. Now this map does include some required mods. Those required mods are the bio tank, the dairy sheep pack, as well as the lizard 6205 pack and the silo for grapes and olives. In addition to those required mods, we are gonna be using the mods we typically use when we take a look at maps. They are additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. Now, I will tell you, if you load this map up in a farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find that the main farm does not have any buildings or animal pins, but it does have all of the starting machinery that we will see here in new farmer mode. In addition to that, you, of course, do not own any of the land. When we load in for the very first time, we start here at our starting farm. See, the starting farm includes couple sheds, silo, farmhouse, as well as several animal areas there down in town. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA itself. Now, anyone that has played the original variant, Volcano Island, this PDA will look very, very similar, but there are a few areas that have been added that did not exist previously. This map does include all the standard crops available to us in Farm Sim 22, as well as the premium expansion crops in red beets, carrots, and parsnips. Go ahead and take a look at our farmland screen. You will see we start up by owning farmland ID3. That includes the main starting farm as well as a few starting fields that can be bought for $233,000 in any alternate game mode. In addition to that, we have the BGA, which is down here, farmland ID15. That can be bought for $232,000. We have olives available at farmland ID55 for $170,000. And we have grapes available at the farmland ID 53 for $284,000. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any field or fields 
what is included. Then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? We're going to be then be able to cross-reference with our field calculator screen, and then it's going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. So you see we start up owning fields 1, 2, and 3 that are 0 0.41, 0 0.77, and 1.17 hectares, respectively. We can then go back and cross-reference these field numbers with our farmland lease screen in order to see which farmland is tied to which given field, then ultimately how much it's going to be to buy that particular field. Taking a look at our crop counter, we do have the base game crop counter available to us here on this map. And if we take a look at our prices screen, you will see that we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops. They're again available to us in Farm Sim 22. In addition to our animal outputs of eggs, wool, and milk, as well as our silage, a straw, and grass. As we move down through our base game productions, we once again do indeed have the ability to sell all of the base game productions that are available to us in Farm Sim 22. In addition to that, we do have the ability to buy bulk lime as well as sell our stones down at the docks. We do have mayonnaise and sandwiches as additional new fill types as well as straw hats. With respect to the Platinum expansion, we do not have the ability to sell any of the Platinum expansion production items. So if you do want to get into that with the various forestry areas on this map, you will need to put your own sell point down. And we do indeed have the ability to sell the premium expansion productions as well as crops. If you are playing with pumps and hoses, we also do not have a way of getting rid of our separated manure. This map does include sheep milk as well as sheep cheese as well. We do have places to sell our pellets and then, of course, our premium expansion crops. Taking a look at our starting fleet, we do not have any vehicles or implements that are leased. We own everything and several things do have a fair bit of operating hours on them. And for the most part, everything is well maintained with the exception of our Fent 722. It needs a fair bit of maintenance. While we do have several animal pastures, we do not have any actual animals at the start. This map does have contracts available, and we also do not own any production chains at the start. This map does have 20 custom collectibles, and I will tell you that those custom collectibles are golden UFOs. So we may see some golden UFOs in our meanderings around, and if we do, well, that's what the collectibles are. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. We start out with the Lizard 246 automatic that is part of the 6205 pack, as well as the Fent 722 Vario. We have a large tractor, the Axion 920 from Kloss. We also have the Fent Ideal 8PL Harvester, and that is paired up with the PowerFlow 30-foot grain header, as well as the eight-row Capello corn header. We have then the Nardi N6030 header trailer as well. We have the Manitou MLT737 Telehandler, our 1986 pickup truck. We have the MUK303 trailer from Agriliner, as well as the Breitner TA23065-2 Power Tube Plus Tipper. We've got the Titan 18 Plow, as well as the Samgar 9500K Cultivator. We have the Terrasem C6F Cedar the Breedall K105 Fertilizer and Lime Spreader, as well as the Farsin PF 2.24 Plus TMR Mixer. For a telehandler, we have the Universal Bucket, and then we wrap it all up with a 250, sorry, 2,500 kilogram front weight and two 1,500 kilogram front weights. Take a look at our mods and DLCs. You will see that while this map does not have any custom vehicles or implements, we do have the Lizard 6205 pack, as well as the Dairy Sheep pack. And that is going to include the Joskin milk tanker, which is going to be used to haul the sheep milk. Let's go ahead and take a look real quick at our starting farm area. We have our farmhouse here at the roadside with our pickup truck. We have our sleep trigger at the side door. Then we have our base game silo, our dump and fill points. And then we do have some floodlights as well as some large open sheds for our machinery. Everything you see here can be sold. 
Do we wish to redo things? And then just across the way and kind of into town, we have several of our animal areas. We have our pigs right here behind the shed. So we have our slurry point. We have a food trough and then our pig delivery. This is just a base game building. 270 pigs in all. And we have our cow area. 80 cows in here. With our milk trigger. Over here we have a sheep area. With our drop off for a sheep. 65 sheep in here. With our food trough and wool trigger. Of course, we have our food and straw triggers inside. Our slurry point, then we have our chicken coop. 360 chickens in total. With our food and then our egg point over here on this side. And that is pretty much it. Now, some of our machinery is stored across the street. This is not land that we own. But this is where we have some of our implements. And this is going to be bale and pallet storage. 250 bales or pallets are going to be able to be stored in here. Let's jump back real fast because we did skip over the precision farming soil map. So let's go ahead and see how that is being applied to these fields. As you can see, we do have the generic soil map being applied to these fields. To the north, we have a good set of silty clay loam and sandy loam. To the south, we've got a bit more loamy sand being mixed in to the mix with respect to all the other soil types as well. Let's go ahead and get a little bit of altitude. Now we're looking right toward our infamous volcano, the namesake of this map. There we have our small machine sheds and our starting farm and then our various animal areas below. Right here, kind of in town, where we have several cell points and productions. It's also where we're gonna find our vehicle shop and that's where we're gonna be circling back to after we get done, kind of taking a look around the map from above. We've got a sell point and a buy point down below. Let's so make our way over to the port. There are a couple production items on the way. So we have our grape processing as well as our oil. And then over here, beside the port, basically to the west, we have the all-terrain park. And this can be a great way to let off a little steam. You can start, I guess, either direction, left or right. Because basically, whichever way you start, that's the other ways where you're going to end up. But this is quite an interesting kind of course here. And then we have a split. We can either go left or right. Over the water are plate safe. up and around and down and over and then eventually we're back out where we all started this map does have a airport as well that's what we're coming up to next we've got our flour mill and animal dealer right over there What wouldn't be a map without a giant hole in the ground? And then we have our airport, or should I say just our basic landing strip. Now we can buy this land, and on this land we do have a silo. So if we do buy the land, we will have access to this silo. And a little kind of hangar shed. 
And here we have a placeable area that we can buy and expand, place additional productions down, additional sell points, or just a secondary farm. Here we have the BGA. Now I'll tell you, if you buy the biogas plant, you can sell part of it, but not the entirety of it. You can sell the triggers. And if you sell the triggers, the BGA bunkers here will go away, as well as all of the triggers. But the rest of this facility is going to remain. Here we have a little residential area. We do have three greenhouses that are a part of that residential area. Over here on some of the expanded or extended part of the map, we have a cow and sheep pasture. Now this sheep pasture is going to be for sheep that provide milk. So let's go ahead and buy a sheep there. 30 sheep in here. So we have our water, we have our food, then this well, since this is for sheep milk, this is likely not going to be for wool. This is going to be our milk trigger. And we have our cow pasture over here. It's going to hold 60 cows in this area. And then we have our water, food, and our milk trigger there. Making our way up the east, we have another new area in an island that is going to have our olives. And then we also have a grape and olive silo located over here. Continuing up the western side of the map, directly in front of me, we then have another extended area where we have our grapes. And again, another Grape and olive silo is going to be placed here. And then, of course, we have our infamous volcano, the namesake. Got a little bit of erosion going on down here. And then up here, I do want to point out, again, the custom collectibles. We have golden UFOs. So there are 20 golden UFOs scattered around. That's your freebie. You get to find the rest. Let's go ahead and make our way back over here to town to our vehicle shop, where we'll get our Mahindra and do our drive around, taking a look at all the productions as well as sell points. So we have our shop dealer trigger here on the side. And then we have our shop dealer maintenance trigger actually around the front of the building right here. And it is marked off right beside our fuel point. Pretty decent area for vehicles and implements to spawn in right by the road. Very easy access to get out. We don't have a fence to deal with. So we really don't have to worry about if our vehicles or implements are too big to get out of the yard. That's always good to see. Now, before we get on with the drive around, we do have custom production on this map. So let's go ahead and do a little rundown of all the production, the inputs, and the outputs. So we have 14 total productions available on this map. We have a cheese store. And that's going to make butter, cheese, and then we have sheep cheese. We've got a chocolate factory that's going to make chocolate. We have a pretty standard carpentry shop. It's going to take and make furniture and wood chips. We have our flour mill. We have three greenhouses, fairly standard there. We do have also our oil mill, our grape processing, so as our sugar mill. Our sandwich shop. Well, this one's going to be interesting. We have three different sandwiches that we can make. 
One sandwich is going to require bread, mayonnaise, lettuce, tomato, and eggs. Another sandwich is going to be bread, cheese, and butter. And then we have bread, lettuce, tomato, and cheese. Then we have mayonnaise itself, which is going to require sunflower oil and eggs. Our clothing factory is going to either make clothing out of wool or cotton, as well as straw hats out of straw. We have our fairly standard biogas plant. Then we have our cereal factory. So with respect to our scoring metric, we are going to be giving the map a full point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such because we have 14 productions built in. In addition, we are going to be giving the map a full point with respect to having the ability to sell all of our base game crops, animal outputs, and production items. And then also being able to fully customize the farm because everything here at the starting farm can be sold. So here we have our fuel point. And around the other side of that facility, we've got a electric charging station as well as a cell point between the convenience store and our shop. Going full circle, we're coming around to our cereal factory. So we have our dump point, house spawn point, and interactive icon. We're going to have a bulk lime buy silo. This is going to be our sawmill, I believe. So we've got our cabinet maker and our carpentry shop. So the cabinet maker is a cell point and our carpentry shop is going to be our production. Sorry about that. I was looking down at the mini map, trying to figure out where I could get rid of this lime. So here we have a sell point. Purchase all production. So oh, can I sell our lime here? Can indeed. I can indeed. Now someone's gonna wonder: Can you make a profit buying and selling lime? Because the earth's so close. I don't know. I didn't pay attention to the lime buy price, but maybe someone, maybe someone did. Here we have Mama Joe's Diner. That's going to be a sell point here in the back. And then this is going to be a cell point for biotank. That's going to be for various products. We have our chocolate factory right across the street from that. For interactive icon around front, we have our dump point and a pallet spawn point around the back. Here we have our sugar mill, standard base game sugar mill. So we have our interactive point, we have our pallet point, and then around the back, we're gonna find our dump point. Then if memory serves me right, we've got our sandwich factory coming up, as well as our clothing factory. So here we have the custom sandwich factory. And I remember when this map first came out, the first version of this map in Volcano Island, I really wanted this sandwich factory to be available as a standalone mod. So we have our dump point there on the side, our interactive icon, and then we have our pallet spawn point to run the back. We have our clothing. So we have our dump point to run the back. Interactive point. 
and pallet spawn point here on the side. Just make our way down the road to our animal dealer. So we have our animal dealer located right here. Now there isn't a bale sell point here at the animal dealer. That's typically why we don't have the ability to do separating manure for pumps and hoses, is that a bale sell point is not at the animal dealer. So we have our base game at Grain Mill. But then from here, we can go one of two ways. So we can go to the left, which is going to take us kind of counterclockwise around the map to the north and to the port. Or we can come over here to the right, go over this little land bridge to the island area that has the airport landing strip. And the only thing really over here at the airport landing strip is going to be that stylo off in the distance. I should check. It does not appear. I thought maybe, just maybe, this was an undocumented um, water fill trigger here at the hole that was full of water, but it does not appear to have a trigger associated with it. Now, for the sake of time, I'm not going to try my skill at the all-terrain course with the Mahindra, but well, I highly suggest everyone download the map, if only, if only, just to take your favorite vehicle over the all-terrain course. You know it's going to be a blast. Let's just quickly cut across field 51 because we do have a cell point over here at this little house location. You see they're going to accept various produced products. Then we're going to go straight past the off-road course. And we'll make our way over to the dock. Back on the main road, we have our grape processing area, pallet interactive point, dump point. We have our oil mill, interactive icon dump, and pallet spawn. Here we have a biomass heating plant. So we're going to be able to sell logs or wood chips here. Then we have our port. With our cell point. And again, we have at all the various cell point areas, we have these really nice signs that are basically going to show us what is available for sale at those, including our stones. Make our way all the way to the end of the dock. We have another cell point again with the indication here what we can export. 
grapes, olives, cakes, and honey. For the sake of time, I think I will save driving up the volcano to the observatory. Plus, we were already there during the flyover portion of the video. We will make our way west in order to get over to where the grapes are located. Here we have some sell points. We have some product buy point. So you can buy and sell products. I believe my my Mahindra is too low to activate that trigger. So you have to come in with a larger trailer see if it's too low here as well so here we can buy wheat barley oat canola sorghum olives sunflower soybeans corn then we have our cell trigger there and well I said I said it wasn't going to but okay here these two cars are rather lucky that this mysterious golden UFO fell in between them. And while we're looking, there's gonna be our silo Vulcan grains, selling point and the buying point. Well, those selling and buying points are relative to the business. So when they say selling point, they mean they're going to sell to you. For you, it's a buy point. So that can sometimes be a point of confusion with players is how things are worded. It's a sell point, but they aren't buying anything of yours. So therefore you can't sell to it, right? So sometimes you have to think maybe which perspective is this particular area labeled for? There we have our pilgrimage up to the volcano. To see, I guess, uh, I guess see our alien overlords. Maybe that's the big, maybe that's the big secret that caused everyone to leave initially. So here we have our new grape area with some pre-placed grape vines and a grape and olive silo. This is one of the required mods. So we're dumping fill point there. In this area, as well as the one we're about to go to, that has olives we can sell the grape silo of course if we own the land we can also sell or destroy the grapevines and the olive trees if we wanted to do something else there but in order to do that you will need to own the land A uh, portion of the map is flat, but we do have a little bit of hilly terrain here around the volcano itself. And we have our olive trees. And then another grape and olive silo. Quite a lot of olive trees here. Oh, 
we'll make our way down to the next large area of triggers, which is this residential area. And we have three green greenhouses right here. These are the three greenhouses that we can buy as far as production. Fairly standard base game greenhouses. And then around the back of that, we have a cell point here at the pizzeria. We have another cell point here, kind of another restaurant area. So this is gonna be labeled the garden. And we have the pizzeria. The barn is the next cell point that we're gonna come up to. Which is over here to our right. This is gonna be basically our hay straw grass cell point. The loose and bales. We have the biogas plant. And this is basically modeled on the Elm Creek BGA. So we have two bunkers there. Or two digesters there. Here we're going to deposit our slurry. Oh, sorry, that's going to be where we get our digestate out. Our slurry dump is over here. We have another cell point, the little silo. The cheese store is going to be where our cheese production is. So we a dump point, our interactive point, and our pallet spawn point here on the other side. And then we should have here another cell point in town. And then one more. Uh, let's see here. We had the village grocery and the stand. back here and tag the village grocery okay so that's where we were there and let's tag the stand and then the village grocery between there and then the stand goes back here hidden away and right there we have the stand All right so we have our milk eggs, cheese, and butter. So as far as our other two scoring metrics go, buildings where appropriate are using the new texturing technique. Yes, indeed, they are. In fact, all of these buildings are, for the most part, if not entirely, from the three base game maps, Elm Creek, Hope Bellarune, and Erlingrot. Then lastly, player and interactive areas being clearly marked. I'm gonna be giving the map a full point there also because I do feel that they are all clearly marked. So that's going to give this map a score of 5 out of 5. We haven't had a 5 out of 5 for quite a long time, sadly, which is really, really unfortunate because, in my opinion, every map, every map should be a 5 out of 5. It's not too much to ask that every map have the basic functions of the game for which it is released for. Production, that's a new feature in 22. Let's have maps that support 22, support those features. The ability to sell everything you can grow or make. That should be a standard item. The ability to customize, build out your farm. That was introduced in Farm Sim 19, enhanced in 22, 
it should be just a standard item. Sure, some maps, some maps are intended to be realistic portrayals of real life areas. And in those cases, fine. Players don't have to delete things. They can leave them how they are. But other players, well, they may choose to play however they want to play. And if they want to change out the farm, well, then they should have that power. Let me hear your all's thoughts down in the comments below. My ever always controversial scoring system. Until next time, happy farming.